Yeah, there we go. Guns in the 701.com. We are back and we are here for our Wednesday show and I hope everything's going well. And it looks like we're on CommyTube as well. Apparently, uh, Clay got it all fixed from last week. So we're all good to go. Vance, how are you? Good. How's it going, guys? Hey, hey Vance. Gene Cox, I believe the mayor of Mobridge. Yes, that, that is true. <laughs> and I know that uh, you had just got done from a meeting there, so that's right. My wife is running for city council. Do you have any advice for somebody new running for city council in your uh, in your town? No, uh, no, I okay. I'm probably going to be different from Vance, but I I kind of think those are the jobs that people need to be lined up around the corner to get into. Yep, we have um, a lot of people that will will, will complain, but they do uh, they don't jump jump to take the jobs. That's right. Yeah, um, you know, dive in, and you know, if, if my wife's listening, I always tell the story, and she'll deny it and gets mad at me, but it's it's my story. Um, how I got involved in local government, I was complaining about something at home one day, and mm -hmm. she said, either either run for office or shut up about it. And, You're not good at shutting up. No, I I think she thought I was supposed to shut up, and now here I am. Uh, next month I'll start my fourth term as as mayor, um, and before that I was on I was a councilman for uh, I think eleven years, ten years, eleven years. So right, uh, it, it it's a lot of learning. It's going to be a big learning curve, and it, if should your wife get uh, elected and then successful, it's probably going to take her about a year or two to learn the job. Yeah, that's what I that's what I'm thinking too. I mean, she's been immersed in all the uh, watching the back channels of all the uh, the show. Or I mean, the, um, the the meetings over the last couple of years, mm -hmm. and uh, seeing how everything runs and whatnot. But uh, yeah, you're right. It is it's a learning curve once you get in there. I guess that's the main yes. thing. But yeah, everybody yeah. wants to complain about it. But it's good that we uh, we yes. uh, have people uh, actually stepping up. Uh, yeah. I got to say uh, hello out there to Brian. Brian is there with us. Eric Newman is uh, here with us as well. Waylon making an appearance. We're good to see you there, Waylon, and everybody right. else. One Shop Cap as well. Tune in. in. Hey, today, uh, Clay is out. Uh, actually, he's already done seven uh, calves today, and he's uh, working on another. So uh, he might be back in the show here in a little bit. We are going to be talking to Gene about uh, classic guns, old style rounds, and saving old guns from the scrap pile. I thought that would be a good thing to talk about today with Gene, uh, because, uh, you know, I see those pictures from Australia when they confiscated all the guns down there and scrapped it all. And it's, it's like the if you ever have a personal horror story uh, in your mind, that's, that's the picture that I, I see right there, because it's just ridiculous. As a matter of fact, we were seeing that um, New Zealand, who has... Uh, done their gun uh, confiscation uh, thing started up. Uh, crime's gone up 33%. So uh, since they started that, and it's just going to get worse. And that's because people aren't going to give them up. And that's just the way it is. I mean, and especially people aren't going to give them up. And the people that do are now unprotected from the from the criminal elements. And, and uh, even in us. Exactly. And they created a black that's market. Right. And, and, and we've said that before. A black market will happen from that every single time. So, yeah. Uh, um, of course, we... Uh, we got to say that, uh, yeah, we're on uh, the Rumble. We're also on uh, Fascist Book, uh, Facebook, and uh, CommyTube as well. And we're actually on there. I just uh, tuned in and saw this pop up there. So uh, I don't know how long that's going to last, but we'll, we'll wait and see. And uh, we've got a lot going on tonight. We've also got uh, an episode of Badass of the Week coming up. We're going to be talking about Charles French, a uh, great uh, World War II hero. Uh, unsung hero, as a matter of fact, and we'll uh, we'll have a, a segment on that. Uh, start off uh, with the show, Gene. Um, when I think of classic guns, I grew up uh, inside cities, so I remember when there were twenty fives and thirty twos uh, floating around everywhere, and they were always the go to gun to get. But nowadays, I never see, except for gun shows. I never see thirty two rounds. I never see any of the smaller caliber rounds. But do you think they're I mean, besides a collector's value, do you think they're even uh, something to keep nowadays or, or just uh, out of nostalgia? I, I guess I got to uh, clarify. Um, uh, rifle calibers or pistol calibers? I'm, I'm oh, sorry, pistol. handgun calibers. Um, you know, you, you, they're, they're always going to be there. You can go buy manufactured ammunition for 32 or 25. Right. Um, just don't spaz out when you see the price. Right. Um, yeah. When you see... Oh, crap. And I've got ammo for it. It's buried when I had my gun shop. But um, Federal tried to bring out that 327 Federal Magnum. Right. You know, and they touted that as a self-defense, you know, stuff like that, which I believe was 
uh, the Magnum version of the 32 H and R, which was the Magnum Magnum version of the, I think the 32 Smith and Wesson. I'm not sure. Right. Um, so, so they always try to kind of drag it back out, but it just never quite seems to catch on for whatever reason. So, well, um, you know, and I, uh, I love the old style, the, the old, um, what do they call fans? What do they call the old, uh, like little, uh, 32s and whatnot. I mean, they were, they were more like your, yeah. The no, no, no. The, uh, the actual uh, like revolvers, but I, I would consider them more of a pocket gun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. they really were. I, I was thinking Derringer. I have a 32 Derringer, a Davis 32 two shot. In fact, I bought ammo from Gene quite a few right. years ago at his gun shop for that. Um, I, um, and I bought that, the, the Derringer, from Welland Little Eagle, who is on right. there, I believe. And I still have some of that ammo right over there that i bought from gene i'm not i i know what you're talking about the little revolvers but i can't think of what i've heard saturday night specials right uh, the 38s some some but knuckle busters yeah those Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things with me is is that uh, i always i always end up finding these like these old german um pistols from like the 20s and 30s that are you know not exactly you know uh, shooting ready uh i can get them pretty cheap from the from the gun shows and then i i uh, i try to you know find a couple of guys around here that still work on stuff uh and get them going and usually getting parts is always the difficult thing and usually you gotta hodge one to get another one working but uh i think it's i think it's like a nostalgia thing i mean we've all got classic you know, hundred or 300, 400, 500,000 dollar rifles and stuff that we've collected over the years. And, and we, we love them. We keep them we know they're special and whatnot. And, um, the Montana rifles, like, uh, we had at the NRA shows years ago. Remember those things, those things are beautiful. And I've still want one of those. Uh, but you know, I, I think that, uh, sometimes some of the old guns that you used to see, uh, filtering around are, are kind of gone away and some of the different calibers as well. And Gene, you could probably tune into that. Um, you've probably seen a lot of guys and girls coming in uh, to your shop back in the day uh, with some, some oddball calibers and whatnot that uh, were some classic guns. Yeah, that's, um, that's what we figured out was our, our seller. Uh, you'll never compete with a Walmart or, you know, runnings or a, a big store like that on 30 out six, two seventy. Um, right. But if you've got that box of 303 British, that box of 32 Smith and Wesson, uh, 3040 Crag, you know, eight Mauser, you right. know, we we made our money when we sold ammunition. You know, we made money on that stuff. Um, you know, caveat and maybe some other gun uh, gun show people or gun people can you know, reaffirm this, but a small gun shop selling regular ammunition is like a gas station selling gas today. Right. You know, they, they don't make a lot of money on that, but they get you on the other stuff, you know? So, right. so, so that's where we found our niche, but yeah, I saw quite a bit of that stuff. And, uh, those, those things have a big following out there. Yeah. It's kind of nostalgia too. I mean, I, I've got a lot of friends, uh, here, uh, uh Q jewelry here in town, uh, uh, Quincy friend of mine. Uh, he actually does some engraving. He's got some engraving machines he picked up over the years and, uh, and stuff that he's, he's working on guns right now for me. So he's kind of just doing some little scrolling here and there. And, you know, nothing, <clears throat> nothing as much as good as like double A uh, out of, uh, you know, uh, out of uh, Rapid City or something like that. But, you know, mm-hmm. just stuff to give something a little flavor. And, uh, yeah, I was thinking about getting something like that for my daughter. Uh, she's out in Virginia now and she definitely needs a little more protection than what she's got. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, I don't feel like I'm losing out. I'm not marking it up and, uh, and everything. So I, I, I just think they're, I just think they're a classier guns than, uh, and they're not super powerful. And I think that's one of the things about my daughter is, is that she's always been a shooter and she's done all that stuff, but, uh, you know, she's still, she's just a little girl. So she doesn't want to, to have a huge, uh, you know, something powerful, powerful, but something she can protect herself with. So that's why I've always liked those older, those older pistols. But uh, you know they yeah. might be on the way up. There's something. There's something to be said about the simplicity of the older guns. Uh, you know, uh, next to my, we believe it or not, we each have a gun on our yeah, stance. Yeah, my yeah, wife yeah. and I. <laughs> uh, my wife's is a, a Charter Arms 38. It's a very simple, low budget gun, but it's a very reliable gun. I know when she pulls that trigger, it's going to go right. off. And I have a uh, 40 Smith and Wesson next to my bed. 
I like the simplicity of the older guns. One of my favorite guns to shoot is a 33. Right. I, I grew up shooting it, you know, down growing up shooting hogs in Florida. We didn't shoot real long distance. So that 3030 was just the world to all of us kids that back then. And um, even today, you know, I've been blessed to have, I, I've got some nice guns. And you know, it's funny, you both, I've shot with both you guys at the NRA events and stuff. Um, and we'll get out there. I remember one we did in uh, Macintosh at the uh, uh, NRA. I don't know what Clay called it. It was when we got together for the right, budget right. meetings. And then oh, up in Wataga. Afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we would go out there and we would have 20 pickup trucks, probably 200 guns, tailgates full of the fanciest firearms right. around from 50 BMGs, Barrett's and all that stuff. And then once, you know, the ego contest was over, we broke out the 22s and the older guns and had right. a lot of fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that's that's like where I was saying, uh, that's where I blew most of my uh, eight millimeter Mauser that I was uh, asking. Gene, Gene's got some some of those as well. And I got some from uh, Double H Guns. Yeah, I, I, I love the, yeah, there you go. So yeah, yeah. I, I love the Mauser and, uh, I, my dad got me a Mauser from, uh, from a local place uh, here in town when he was still, uh, still with us. And, uh, it was pretty beat up. Um, I had the, uh, the stock, uh, all, uh, dyed and everything. So it's a, like an all, it's like a olive green now, uh, black, uh, barrel. And, and I love that thing and it just shoots so well, but yeah, I was out of ammo for the longest time. And you remember that an unloaded gun is an expensive club. Mm -hmm. So Right. <laughs> so, but um, Gene, what's uh, what's one of your favorites on the uh, to go to for say uh, more of the classic styles? That's not one of the the calibers or whatnot that uh, like either for hunting or for for protection. Um. Well, are we back to rifle or handgun or either one? We'll, we'll go uh, rifle this time. Okay. I was going to say you're kind of boy. You're way out there. Uh, <laughs> I've been told it, that before. It well. The, the, the initial answer is it depends because uh, I have no idea really what I want to take until I go right. get closer to deer season. Um, this this rifle I just showed you, that 8 Mauser, I've, I've shot deer with it uh, mm -hmm. for fun. Um, you know, I've got another one here. I, I brought a few of them out. Um, figure I, I can and bring them as we look. Uh, last year I started hunting with a 40, oh, sorry, J.D., I started hunting with a 41 Magnum lever action from Henry. Right. Um, mm. Just because. Um, I loaded up some bullets for it, went and tried it out. I've, I've shot a deer with that. I've got a 41 Magnum handgun. Uh, looks like Dirty Harry. It's, it's the same. Uh, it's the model 58, which Dirty Harry used the model 29, which is 44 Magnum. Looks right. the same. Shot a deer with that, um, you know. Because uh, you know, I've shot deer with 30 out six, seven mags, 41 magnums, you know, stuff like that. So 303 British, you know, so. And that's uh, something that I've always, that's a very that's something I've always wanted to get into when you go out the gun shows and this and that. And you see those those old infield rifles and whatnot. And, it, and you just want them because they're just so classy. Yep. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, it's always one of those things I want to pull the trigger on and buy. Um, so yeah, but you know, and you know, like I said, but you know, there are guys that still make the ammo out there. There's are some guys that can get, the, you can get the ammo from. So you're right. The big box stores don't make any money off of that stuff, but, uh, you know, the, the there are people out there that once you, once you make the contact with them, it's, it's good to yeah. know. Them. And it's kind of like you, it's, it's good to know you that I know that eight millimeter and others that I can, you know, I can contact you now. Um, Vance was talking about the 3030, and uh, yeah, I always talk about how you know it's not it depends on where you're going hunting. 243 usually right. works for me, you know, most of the plains. But uh, once I get out into the hills and whatnot with uh, with all the trees and everything, I don't want to scope. I, I usually go for a 3030 with iron sights, and uh, that's that's usually how I like to go. And and I and I hit so much better because I instinctively around all the woods. Pull up that scope into my eye, and next thing I know, I'm looking through the trees, and I can't find anything, and the deer is right in front of me. Right. So um, the 3030 has always right. worked out for me, and and we've been talking the last couple of months about how you know the 3030s and the and the lever actions are all making a big comeback uh, uh, because of the new innovations they've got on it. So it's actually pretty cool. So I, I kind of like having that uh, old school shooting instead of uh, instead of uh, you know. 
I don't know. I'd, I'd like to be a Buck Meyer. I would. I'd love to, you know, win the lottery and just uh, get, uh, you know, some titanium rifles and whatnot. I was, you know, it's good to have the extra 300 bucks into it and, and, and have a gun that's much lighter. I mean, it, I would, he was talking about that on Jamie's show last week. And yeah, right. it totally makes sense to me. As I get older, yeah, I'd, when you try to trim any weight where you can and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, not, you know, dropping your gun down from 16 pounds to, to 12 pounds makes a difference, you know, carrying carrying up there. Yeah, that's that's a big difference. I noticed, you know, uh, when I hunted up there, uh, when I was up that way, I did a lot of walking, a lot of spot and stalk, and you're going up the hills and down in draws, and you know, it's it's it, it's uh, it's an exercise. And with that extra weight on your back, it it's tiring. Mm-hmm. So I mostly carried synthetic guns up there because it was quite a that's bit right. lighter down here. I'll take a wood gun because I'm walking to the stand or walking to the blind and I'm not going to be carrying it for very long. And um, the 3030 is one I really um, got back to when I came down here because I don't do much long range shooting at all. I mean, 100 yards is a fairly long shot here and you can do that with a 3030 real easy. Um, I, In fact, I carried it a couple times this past hunting season. It just so happened the bucks that the deer that i killed this year i happened to have an ar with me again short range because i only had a red dot, red dot on the ar um but i do like the older guns and i'm a revolver guy too because i like the older classes and clay always kicks me in the butt on that when i remind him that i sold my uh my ruger vaqueros because i kicked myself in the butt too because i never should have sold them you know they were the old styles they they could handle a heavier Great load guns. and they were just the the best darn guns in the world and you know and you know just and i love wheel guns i'm just a wheel gun guy and i i think that's because i'm much more confident with them uh and that's the way you should be with anything you carry but uh, yeah it's just you know it's just one of the things i, I love the vaqueros and and they've got some stuff you know coming out like you, you know, Heritage has been coming out with different, you know, style stuff right now. That's, that's always affordable. But, uh, you know, and, and what's the uh, what's some of the other uh, off brands of Ruger? Um, I want to think not Chippewa. I'm thinking of something else. Um, they oh, sell God. with those types of cowboy guns. What's that one that uh, Chip Petty? Or something? I, I'm probably a little bit <laughs> out of rotation, but uh, uh, Rossi. Rossi, was, yeah, was putting yeah. out a quite a Rossi's quite a bit good. of them in the '92 style action. Um, I know Rossi was there. Was one called Puma out for a while. Yeah, um, right. I've got one. JD says I can't show it. I brought it down to showcase, but it's the one I shoot in competitions. It's a model '94. Right. Um, you know, and that was in '94, eighteen ninety-four. That is. I mean, that was that was the most technologically advanced firearm in, in the world. You know, right. so. Uh, and one of the things, I mean, you talk about, I mean, cowboy guns are, are great. But remember when Cowboy Fast Draw was at its height uh, around the areas? And uh, what's the other thing where they do it off the horses and whatnot? Um, uh, oh, the mounted yeah. shooting. I mean, it's yeah. it's great to watch. It's great to do. Love that stuff. I mean, I did cowboy shooting for about four or five years and uh, and loved it. But, uh, yeah, and it, but you, I think you could find a lot more then. But now I think it's kind of... Uh, calmed down a little bit as far as how many people are in it. Uh, it was nice because they were making guns of different sizes for uh, revolvers and whatnot that for mm-hmm. different people and for, you know, a lot of women were getting into the sport as well. And so the uh, guns that were easier for people to hold. And uh, We just don't see a lot of that right now. We've gone back to more of the, uh, uh, the 1911 and the, and the um, I guess you say Smith and Wesson's uh, you know, the nines and forties and whatnot. But uh, yeah, yeah, we got a, a few guys uh, talking to us. JD's here with us, of course. We got him, and we're going to be talking about his show coming up this Friday. Uh, he's going to be doing the 701 Nation. Uh, he's got drinks with friends coming up, and we're hoping to join him on that. Uh, Lynette, uh, she's on there as well. Let me see if she's got uh, there. She's watching on the backup stream for today. Well, I think I think the regular stream's working, but if it's not, then the backup stream works just as well. Uh, we've got this one here for Eugene from Sarah Cox. Uh, tell Gene his daughter, me, shoots better than him. Uh, she's been known to surprise me on occasion. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I guess my question back to her is who loads all the bullets that you shoot? So <laughs> that's a good one. I like that. You know, uh, you know, I think something that a lot of people, uh, with older guns might, a lot of older guns are not as accurate as today's modern right. firearms, but in some cases, I know the British 
303 is an exceptionally, at least in my experience, and Gene's probably very familiar with them. That thing is an accurate gun. Um, that is a yeah, they gun. they are. Um, you know, but the other thing to kind of keep in the back of your mind, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flash back to gun shop, you know, era. Um, you know, guys would come in, you know, the M, the, the 9130s, the Mosin Nagants, um, mm -hmm. any of those old old rifles. Yeah. You know, one of the questions I'd always get is, well, how accurate is it? No, oh, well. Uh, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's a weapon that was issued to yeah. How good soldiers, you? you know, <laughs> this isn't brand new. So it, it might, it might shoot clover leaves. It might shoot eight inches. But uh, you know, those things, those things majority wise were made in a, uh, hastily, uh, yes. in a wartime era. Uh, and you know, and they're not those precision things that no. you normally think of. Uh, so I know they, but, but I think that when you get those, you've got to learn how to be more intuitive with your mm -hmm. shooting and, and learn the gun because the gun heck the gun once you shoot it enough you'll learn the the uh, the, the feeling that it takes to get a good shot going. Uh, and, some guns are just weird that way. Uh, and the other thing to remember about military rifles with military sights, 303 British, eight Mausers, um, anything with that fixed type sight, the the countries that commissioned those they wanted a certain weight bullet at a certain velocity. Uh, so that's what those sights are put on there for is to make sure that that weighted bullet at that velocity hits that eight inch plate at, you know, a hundred yards. Right. Um, you know, you yeah. start buying, let's pick on 303 British, 174 grain at 2,300 feet per second. Well, you go buy Hornady's new deer round, it's 150 grain at probably 27, 2,800 feet per second. So right. you're going to have a different point of impact. So... Uh, that that's key. Yeah, we see here. We've got uh, one shot. Caps got on here. He's got a good one. Uh, he's talking about uh, his uncle brought back from Germany some Luger pistols and uh, the MP thirty eight. I'm not familiar for, uh, with from Europe, but uh, I know those uh, Luger's was a, as a kid. That was always one of those cool ones that you always wanted because it was just so different. Uh, but uh, yeah. yeah, correct what's me the if I'm wrong, but that's what you're talking about. Right. Yeah. What's the MP thirty eight? Do you know that one? That's that's that German Luger. I to is me, I, okay. I I know what he's talking about. You know, any German officer probably had that. You know, right? Um, actually, Ruger pirated that design in their uh, Mark III pistol. Th those twenty-two pistols, those Ruger pistols. Right. So. Oh yeah, well that would make sense. It looks exactly the same. You know, one of the things I've been carrying for years, and it is the worst gun to reload, is the Mosin Nagant uh, uh, revolver. Uh, I've been shooting one of those. I've been carrying them because it's got a, it's got a great bullet and it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's actually very quiet and uh, everything else. But, uh, yeah, I can see why the, the 1911 beat it out because I'm trying to reload that thing is you might as well just, you know, call it a night. So it's always bad, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. You got to uh, seat that bullet down in inside the case. Right. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's kind of a, a pain as far as loading. I never, I never thought it was a, a brilliant design on that part, but uh, I love shooting the gun itself, and it's just such a weird design to the bullet as well. It's all inset. The bullet itself is inserted into the case, and so it's uh -huh. just kind of a cool thing. Uh, what we got down here? We got uh, big auction in Mandan last Saturday. There was more Savage Model 99 lever actions there than they've ever seen in one spot. That came from Brian Warner, and uh, yeah, they they come out on the market, and Savage is. You know, you know, it's always pretty, pretty good for getting anything, you know, on the starter levels and whatnot. And uh, I, we were talking, uh, I think, uh, like I said, on 701 Nation, they, they were talking about uh, Savage and how they you can get your custom guns from Savage and uh, really precise shooting stuff. But, you know, mm -hmm. I'm never going to be one of those uh, above 300 yard range shooters. Uh, I've gotten lucky once on a, on a deer and uh, it looked good that I hit him uh, and knocked him down and everything. But uh, it's, it's just not my thing. I just, I guess I don't either don't have the eyesight or I just can't, uh, I'm just not that uh, built that way. But uh, that's why I like, uh, you know, I, I, 243 always works what, for me. What was that long shot? Uh, it was how, probably, how was it was it? close to about 400. Uh, I was on the other side of a prairie Sorry. town and, you know, and, and I, it, it was inside a canyon and then there just wasn't any wind and I just got lucky and, uh, and took a great deer that turned out to have one broken antler. So I only have one on one side. So, yeah, but he was standing broadside and I could see the real nice side. So that's yeah, how it uh, worked out. First, first thing you have to do is practice, 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 practice right. some more, 
Um, yes. You know, it's kind of like, you know, I, okay, I went down to Phoenix and I, my daughters and I, they've both been with me, well, my two youngest daughters. Uh, anyway, the whole point is while I'm down there shooting at a 200 yard target with a lever action, and I forget what they call it, but it's a thousand yard competition. Those guys look like race car drivers with all their sponsors right. and, right. you know, but that takes a lot of practice and, you know, whether right. you're trying to hit a target at 200 yards or a thousand yards, you got to practice within that discipline. Right. Yeah. We, uh, Clay and Waylon and I went to a long range shooting clinic. Oh, it's probably been 10 years now or, or more at Lucid Optics in Wyoming. And we went out there, you know, being avid shooters, we've shot some distance. We thought, you know, we, we, we know our stuff, man. We looked that opened up a whole new world to us. And, you know, I play and well, and I put them far above my um, abilities and knowledge in that area, but it, it opened up a whole new world to them. Well, I mean, we came out of there educated. That was, that was just something completely different. Well, you know, yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's the guys like Gene, uh, guys like Bachmeyer and all that. I mean, I'd listen to those guys. I mean, uh, you know, a lot because they know that type of stuff that uh, I can learn from. And, you know, I may be an old dude, but I can still learn. So it's just one of those things you have to do, especially if you want to keep doing it and keep doing it for a long time. I mean, it's just yeah. important to do. And you're right, Gene, on the fact, shoot, shoot, and shoot. Just practice, keep practicing. Practice. You know, you've got to, like you said, you've got to get acclimated with the guns that you have and uh, and and learn the idiosyncrasies of them. Sometimes the guns mm -hmm. can, can be that way. And you've got to, I've got right now, I've got, uh, I think from one of our last banquets we did, uh, Vance, I, I got a, um, uh, Remington uh, 308, and uh, it's got that bottom-fed uh, magazine in it, and uh, that ma magazine just keeps jamming on me all the time. And, and you know, it's one of those things where it's like you you want to shoot this gun more often. And uh, I've gotten other magazines for it. I keep having that problem. I should send it back to Remington. I really have, should. Have you shot it often? Can the spring be too tight? Uh, you know, that could that could be it. Maybe I am just doing it seasonally. Maybe I need to do it more often and just take it out to the range and just go. So you might yeah. be right. Hey, we're going to take a quick break real quick for some of our sponsors. We've got, of course, Lawler Auto and, uh, and uh, of course, Axel and the gang. We also got our friends at Double H Guns out there as well. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. I, I'm trying to work on these new intros to the intros and outros for the uh, uh, for the uh, commercials. So let me see if this works for us real quick. I'm with the Pork Commission. Yeah. I'm from the Athletes Club family. Oh, hey. uh, Brother. Yeah. Hey, can you give my demo tape to somebody? Oh. Oh. Repair, located at 309 South Washington Street in Bismarck, North Dakota. Give them a call at 701-258-6308. The team of mechanics at Lauer Auto can take care of any problem your vehicle is having. And when you do business with Lauer, you can be assured you're doing business with a pro Second Amendment America First Repair Shop. There are plenty of other auto repair shops in the Bismarck Mandan area. But why take a chance at patronizing a shop that might not have your beliefs at heart? Make no mistake. Mistake. Make no mistake. Lauer Auto is your pro Second Amendment repair shop. When you talk to the guys at Lauer Auto, don't forget to tell them that you heard they are a sponsor of Guns and the 701 and that you appreciate their support of our pro Second Amendment, pro North Dakota live stream and podcast. That's Lauer Auto Repair, 701-258-6308. 701-258-6308. Located 309 South Washington Street in Bismarck, North Dakota. Hey, everybody, and we're back for GunsInThe701.com with our guest, Gene Cox. And also, we've got Vance. And back from the uh, barn, uh, we finally got Clay. I made it back, guys. Glad to see you all on. I tell you what, it's been a busy day around here. So. I understand. What are you up to, eight, eight calves today or something like that? Or uh, nine? Yeah, we ended up with eight. Uh, total. Yeah. That's a good day. I mean, that's a good oh, day that's for good anybody, day. but that makes it go fast. Uh, so, yeah, I'm happy. And, uh, yeah. We saved everything. Everything's going well. So Good deal. Gene, we got a question for you. Okay. Axel's asking. <clears throat> What's your take uh, on the reproduction Cimarron and you birdie firearms? Cimarron, uh, that's what I was thinking of. Oh, okay. Cimarron. Yeah. Cimarron, I believe is you birdie or you birdie is Cimarron. Right. Okay. Uh, since JD got onto us, it's one of the ones I had down here. Um, yeah. I've, I've got it. I've, I've got it sitting next to me, but it's, uh, it's the 1894. I bought it in uh 3855. It's a replica. And that's what I take to competitions. Um, I love it. It shoots just fine. Um, 
took me a while, like we were talking earlier, it took me a while to practice with it and to get that right bullet powder combination. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of mad scientist experimenting. And um, I, I will tell you this, if, if anyone gets into a 3855, go to a bait shop, <clears throat> buy yourself a three quarter ounce Lead. Uh, lead sinker shaped like a football and pound it down the board, mic that bore. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know why it is on a 3855. My spec sheet said 375 was the diameter. Come to find out, my bore diameter was 378, 379. So I had to special order a 380 bullet to fit in the barrel. Hmm. So, so my first couple of rounds at reloading. 200 yards i was like i am not pulling it that bad i do not suck that bad <laughs> um called called a guy in montana to order them um if, if i you know rimrock bullets was a company and uh, first thing that guy told me was he goes go uh, slug that bore he said because before you start bad mouthing my bullets you better find out the bore size <laughs> there you go there you go so man this knows his product Mail. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and that's what I've been ordering. I order a lot of my cast bullets from that guy, and I, they shoot fine. So, they shoot better than I can. Oh. <laughs> I just want to give a shout out to everybody over on Rumble. I see we got Dave over there and Pat and some others. So yeah, thanks for chiming in over there, guys. We got, well, we got uh, Eric uh, Newman asked a good question. Uh, over yeah. there. I never heard of D-Max, another gun company that used to make revolvers. Uh, they're not a company anymore. Uh, out of Maiden Springfield. Uh, he had a 454. Uh, so D-Max, I never heard of that one. Mm -mm. Oh. Uh, I've heard of the 454. And, you know, to that comment, I would that. say they make human-sized calibers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That is a, that's a man gun right there. That's a man that's, gun right yeah, there. If, if you're going to go hunt Godzilla or freight trains, <laughs> you, you just <laughs> go ahead and get that one. Yeah, there you go. Well, Clay, we've been uh, hitting Gene with questions left and right about uh, old guns. We're talking about old stuff and whatnot. What do you got to, to talk about on some older stuff? Well, I know Gene's a lot. He, he likes them old military matches. Um, and, of course, I recently here, well, I guess not recently. It's been about, what, three years or so. I, I now have my M1 uh, Grand, which I love to shoot it. Waylon always tells me I should put it away and collect it because it's too nice to be shooting. But I, I got to shoot that gun. I don't know. It is. I really like it. Uh, I'm still getting familiar with it, but had some fun on steel with it. What do you think, Gene, of those? I, I mean, I, I think they're an iconic gun, and they're a weapon of war, so that even makes it better. Oh, I, my, I, I, the M1s, I, I've got a story about that. Um, I, okay, I, uh, I lived up in Colorado and from 95 to 2000. So I bought an M1 Garand or Garand, however you want to say. I bought it at a gun show in Denver. And I went, I rode down to this gun show on a motorcycle. I, I, I ride a motor, I had, I did ride a motorcycle. Um, so then you got married, right? I got married. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so I ended up, I, I, I'm riding on Interstate 76 out of Denver with an M1 slung over my back on a motorcycle. Um, I, you know, confession time. Um, Mike, I think you can understand here. Um, had it for a while, shot it for a while. I liked it, enjoyed it, uh, traded it off. Yeah, and regretted it ever since, I know. Yes, I know yes. Um, traded it off, but the beauty of the trade, uh, I traded it for a Marlin 357 lever gun. Mm -hmm. And at the time, you know, M1s weren't the price they are today. Right. Um, <laughs> now, now, fast forward, if you go look on my Facebook page, uh, further back around February, you'll see my daughter shooting that rifle and actually shooting it well. So for me, that payoff trade is good. My kids and my kids are shooting that. Right. Um, and they enjoy shooting it versus a 30 out six or an M one or something. Well, I was going to, I've told the story a couple of times, uh, to the guys, uh, about, uh, Boyd's gunstock, uh, Dustin and Amanda, who bought that a few years ago, um, uh, went out and bought from, one of the original companies that used to make the uh, the stocks for the grants and they bought up all the the machines that make and lay out the, uh, the 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 stocks for them so you can get from the original equipment 
a new stock make. So if you find a Garand that's in terrible shape, but the but the receiver and the barrel and all that stuff isn't good, but maybe the stock is just crap, you know, or buy it in pieces. You know, you can you can actually get a brand new you know uh, stock done mm-hmm. Boyd's gun stock uh, for the Garands, which I've thought about because that's that's a cheaper way to go about because they are they have gotten pretty spendy. Uh, so it's a way to go around and then try to find the pieces and then uh, take it to them. So I've always thought that's a that's a good idea. And it's good because it saves guns. Uh, it takes some great guns that are out there and it saves them just because the wood's gone gone to hell or whatever else. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. So what do you think about that, guys? Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Um, if you take one, fix it up. You're right. They're kind of spendy. I got a pretty good deal on mine. Do you guys remember Davis? I uh, used to help us out there in Rapid City all the time. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. It was a friend of his had it for sale. I mean, I got all the gear. I got the belt with I got a bunch of actual real clips, guys, not magazines, real clips. Everybody <laughs> wants to know the difference. Ting. And uh, I even got a bunch of uh, civilian Ting. marksmanship, uh, the program, and basically a lot of those loads that came right out of Lake City, uh, original 30-odd-6. So I got a really good deal on it, and I'm glad I got it. It's not a number one per se, but it darn near is just about everything matches on it which is very hard to find nowadays very hard the best right. part of the m1 is we all know is the ting at the end of the ting. Ting. The ja- hey the japanese liked it too <laughs> i had that as my and i think clay did one of y'all had the, that as my text message uh indicator at one time the ting from that'd the- be clay yeah <laughs> yeah I always love sitting with Clay and having dinner somewhere and and you know, all of a sudden <laughs> ting well, you got to be going through TSA checkpoints. Bismarck got used to it, but when I'd come through Dulles and out there in D.C. or someplace else, uh, it was funny when someone would call my phone and that thing would be going through their detector in the little tray. That was great. I was Dulles, you, mean, you mean Trump International Airport? <laughs> yeah. I was in a meeting once and there was probably 12 people in there and everybody had their phones on the conference table and stuff. And my phone started going off and it was bah, 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 Nobody had to look around and see who phones it was. They all pointed to that's Vance. <laughs> hey, Lynette has a question for you, Gene. She asked, uh, uh, Gene, how long ago was it that uh, do you think that you could do that today in Colorado? So how long ago was it? That was probably in 97, 98. Okay. Um, bought so it from the Tanner. It was at the Tanner Gun Show. Um, you know, I was even kind of worried then coming out of Denver because, you know, I lived up in uh, by Greeley which that was still farm community. Uh, Believe it or not, Colorado was a red state then. But even parts of Denver, Boulder were kind of, you know, turning blue. But I don't know if I could do it now or not. I don't don't know if I'd want to be on the interstate on a motorcycle, you know, to be honest. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Hey, Mike. More uh, dangerous than a gun. uh, Pat over there in Rumble, he says, I think the term Mike was looking for earlier is called a mouse gun. Commonly referred to as a pocket pistol. So yeah, pocket that pistol, mouse right. gun. Yeah, rumble. that sounds right. Yeah, yeah, love those things. And and you know what? You can still find them. That they tend not to be the firing pins are bad or whatever you know. And you find in the stuff. And you either got to find somebody who can make the stuff, or you got to find somebody who, you know order it and from overseas in parts, you know, and this and that. And that's yeah. fine. But I still love I still love having those types of things that just you know mm-hmm. and yeah they aren't they aren't the man stoppers that you know we've got today but they uh yeah, they're still I still like them I still think they're great and you know. uh, but uh, and I've never been in a situation where I've had one pointed at me or or pointed at one but a, a guy told me one time he said if you're looking down the barrel you really can't tell if it's a 22 or a 44 <laughs> doesn't That's much right. matter so, does it. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I do a lot. Like, remember the, I forget his name. He used to be the sheriff down there in your county that helped out with the NRA banquet. Oh, Dave Miles. Yeah, David. And David always carried the same thing I'm carrying. I think it was the same thing a North American Arms 22 mag revolver. Right. I carry that a lot, probably more than anything. Chris I Hawk carry my other one. What's that? Chris Hawk. Chris, 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 carries, yeah. Chris Hawk carries the same thing. I mean, I can tell you this it'll do what you need it to do if you need to stop a threat. Now, yeah. Well, kill somebody? I mean, it could, but it, it, I mean, it, it. it'll do the job if you need it. Then it's very concealable. That's what I love about it. I right. take it about anywhere. And nobody even cares that I even – I have it in my Gerber pouch, so it's even better yet. They think it's a Gerber. Ger- Gerber <laughs> well, you know, when they were coming out with uh, uh, the the uh, the Bel Air, uh, remember the Bel Air, Kimber, Kimber and all Bella, that? Yeah. You know, those, you know, and those are nice, and I, and I like those. I, I do, but I, I still like a – I like a revolver. 
And so it's it's just one of those things I like. So yeah, right there. Hey, we got some questions from some people. What we got yeah. here? We got well, Whalen is asking uh, Winnie ninety four and a thirty eight fifty five crazy horse barrel is a three seventy nine bore to load. Mm -hmm. Now you're gonna have to translate that for me because that's Whalen <laughs> speaking right there. Okay. For those okay. of you that don't know Whalen real well, that guy's knowledge of guns. Oh my goodness, he's an encyclopedia. Honestly. <laughs> That guy's knowledge is just insane. Yep. Um, you want you want some quick history or technical yeah, yeah, data brilliant. there? Brilliant. Um, okay, the the Winchester ninety four is a crazy horse. That's a commemorative. Oh, okay. um, your thirty eight fifty five was an original. Okay, I got to say this right. As opposed to a thirty eight special. Okay, a thirty eight fifty five is an actual almost thirty eight caliber bullet going down the barrel okay. uh, compared to a 38 special where the 38 comes from <clears throat> is that is the outside dam uh, diameter of the case around the bullet right so that's why 357 and 38 special are 35 calibers <clears throat> so but yeah why the voodoo on the 3855 you know <laughs> what you talked about earlier on the slug that bore why that is i don't know so another question comes in from Wayne Muth. Uh, are you guys familiar with Silence Corps out of Salt Lake City? I I'm think not. probably everybody is, aren't they? I'm not. Silencer Company? Or no. I think that's what they call them. Yeah, they, they've been around for a while. In fact, I'm trying to remember if they didn't merge or if uh, I'd have to honestly look into that, Wayne. I almost think that they actually merged with somebody, but I, I, I have to check on that. But they're, they're kind of the competition to uh, Brandon Maddox's uh suppressor company i believe right they're the, big, they're the two big ones in the united states there. And, and i will say when you talk about silencers suppressors what are you going to call them i don't own one so i know absolutely nothing about them right <laughs> and, and i call them the same way but... i have shot a few for some friends and uh and i see the the, the benefits and the, especially uh, if, if prairie dog hunting and all that other stuff, mm -hmm. I mean, just, just, uh, you know, amazing that the, you know, you don't have that noise as much as you normally yeah. have, even if you're wearing, uh, you know, plugs in your ears, you know, it's just amazing to, to, to have that just little poof, you know, and just not, not deal with the, the large, you know, the large shot. Uh, it's, it's just kind of cool. It, it is a little spendy, but you know, we've talked about that. I mean, you kind of, you save up and you, you spend it on, I guess, you know, you, you could, I could buy less coffee and, uh, out at the store and, uh, and, uh, probably end up buying some nicer stuff at the gun shop. If I every, every hobby is spendy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so follow up Wayne, I did go check out something here. So they, yes, they are out of West Valley city, Utah, uh, founded in 2008. Their first stuff came out in a 22. That's what they were using for 22s, uh, the way it looks. The acquisition, it wasn't a merger, it was acquisition in 2011 of the South Carolina-based Southwestern Weaponry Research Manufacturing Company. So they acquired that, and that's what really put them out there. And then they just they kept growing and growing and growing here. Uh, they were also one of the founding members of the American Suppressor Association. So that's just a little bit of history. I just randomly okay. just was able yeah. to quick look up. Uh, but they've been around. I knew that there was some kind of a, a business merger. Well, they actually acquired another, uh, basically a manufacturing place, which I'm sure that's what helped them and helped them grow. So there you know. And they make good products. They really yeah. do. I don't have one of theirs. I run lane suppressors. Uh, I, I like lane suppressors out of out of the Black Hills there, and that's the ones I've been running. But uh, I think, I can't tell you, a suppressor, yeah, there's differences. But uh, really, they all they all do the job. It's just yeah, what you right. want. And I recommend titanium. I'm telling you, it's worth the money and it's worth the, to get rid of that extra weight. I know Jamie got asked about that uh, last week when he was on right. with Scott and Jesse, but I'm a big titanium guy. I've had the steel, I've had the stainless steel, and I'm telling you, titanium is the way to go. Well, when you're adding, you're adding how many inches to the end of your barrel, you know, you, Correct. you're, yeah. you're adding a, a big change to the entire weapon. I mean, the whole balance of it. So yeah, the lighter that is, it's, the better it's going to be for you to adjust than, than having yeah. something too much. There's a good well, here, That also comes with, like I was saying earlier, when I hunted up there and I would go out hiking for a long ways and up and down them hills and in draws and everything. The less weight you have on you, the whole lot better mm -hmm. off you're going to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. 
Let's and I, I can I can get rid of weight from my my gear. Um, getting it off myself is a little harder. So I got well, most of yours. I got to take every pickup, Clay. <laughs> yeah. The mobile hunting blind. The mobile hunting blind. I'm sure you've heard that term, haven't you, Gene? You, you probably know well, Waylon. That I think Waylon oh, yeah. that term. Yeah. Mobile yeah. hunting blind. So uh, Corey asks, uh, and his dad has a 3040, Craig, and my grandpa actually had one of these, but. Does anybody have any history on the 3040 Craig? And I imagine Gene has a little history on that. I'm well, I saw the question pop up, so I, I'll i turn to the, <laughs> the Bible here. Um, <laughs> let's see. It was the first smokeless rifle cartridge adopted by the Army. Uh, the Model 92 Craig Jorgensen chambered in the 3040 uh, became standardized. Nobody knows what that is. That's what Teddy Roosevelt and them charged up San Juan Hill with. Right. I did. Uh, was the 3040 Crags. Um, right. Yeah, the Crag was an, originally a Norwegian design and featured an unusual side loading magazine. So I, I knew that was a, a Norwegian, I think it's a Norwegian and Danish um, uh, combination. And the, the U.S. Army replaced that, uh, the 4570, with that. And one of the things they liked about it was the soldier had to load each round individually because they wanted them to be good marksmen. Right. Well, right. The, the the, shooting. Yeah. At, at San Juan Hill, they faced off the Spanish, and the Spanish had Mausers, like the one I just showed you, <laughs> uh, and could be loaded with stripper clips. And, yeah, it was – A little didn't bit of an advantage, huh? Yeah, yeah look, you know, uh, <laughs> they they could put out more firepower with a bolt action rifle. What a concept, you know. So huh, amazing, it, right? Amazing yeah. how that so, works. So so shortly after that, it didn't take the US Army long to say, you know what, we need something else. <laughs> need 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 a change of direction. Yeah. Which was the nineteen oh three Springfield, in case anybody cares. Yeah. I was just gonna say, I bet it was the Springfield, wasn't it? I didn't yep. know that, but I, I was just putting money on. It. I was like, I bet it was that. Yep. It was the Springfield, and we all know yeah. <laughs> we know yeah. where that went. Gene, yeah. Gene was breaking out his books. So I, I had to pull pull, <laughs> pull some up here myself. <laughs> oh, I've I've got several. I don't know if you can see behind me. I got a, a pile of stuff. Yeah, I, I carry this to... one everywhere. You know, the Constitution. I always okay. have them laying around. I... I just happened to, I saw that question pop up and I see my book right here and I was like, I, I can answer that. So <laughs> good deal. Good deal. So I, I don't know where you guys have been at. Um, do we want to do a quick uh, time? We need to do a Thank double commercial. All right, we need to do a double it. commercial with our sponsors real quick. And uh, I've got something new I'm trying here real quick for you, Clay. So let me hit this right. first and then I'll hit the double uh, spots for us. Let's see if this cool. works. On a bad day, just remember there's somebody out there pulling a door that says push. Fucking dumbasses. <laughs> Repair located at 309 South Washington Street in Bismarck, North Dakota. Give them a call at 701 258 6308. The team of mechanics at Lauer Auto can take care of any problem your vehicle is having. And when you do business with Lauer, you can be assured you're doing business with a pro Second Amendment America First Repair Shop. There are plenty of other auto repair shops in the Bismarck Mandan area. But why take a chance at patronizing a shop that might not have your beliefs at heart? Make no mistake. Make no mistake. Lauer Auto is your pro Second Amendment repair shop. When you talk to the guys at Lauer Auto, don't forget to tell them that you heard they are a sponsor of Guns and the 701 and that you appreciate their support of our pro Second Amendment, pro North Dakota live stream and podcast. That's Lauer Auto Repair, 701-258-6308. 701-258-6308. Located 309 South Washington Street in Bismarck, North Dakota. Discover the world of firearms at Bismarck's Double H Gun Shop. With a wide range of products from handguns to rifles, we cater to all your shooting needs. We are your local gun experts. Not only do we sell firearms, reloading supplies, targets, and whatever your heart desires, but we also have a ton of knowledge and answers. We shoot, we hunt, we compete, we reload. It's been the Howard's way since 1976, and we ain't fixing to change anything. Visit our website at hhgunshop.com to browse our inventory. Double H Gun Shop, Bismarck's best new and used firearms. Reloading supply, gunsmithing, and sporting goods store. Double H Guns. Double H Guns. 1021 South Washington Street, Bismarck, North Dakota. Call 701-223-4888. All right, and we are back. Yeah, hey, look, I got the moves like Michael, the flow like Aubrey, walking around thinking I'm a prince like 
Miss Audi Mismatched Converse, t-shirts tucked in Know my worth, can't tell me nothing White Nike's albino, can't cop my speedo Head to the top, bottom line is a <laughs> Sorry, sorry, I got too much time on my hands Mike has been playing around evidently at work <laughs> Yeah, yeah like, so tell my boss that I've been doing that while I'm on my phone while I'm oh. at work there you go. Perfect. You know what? You got to kill the time somehow, right? I know. <laughs> can't give him all my time. Come on. <laughs> I see Corey had to bug out. He uh, He's a fireman. He's a volunteer fireman over there in Lemon, and it is fire drill night. So, yeah, he's going to be uh, going over there and getting all educated so he can go out there and save everybody. So Y'all be, be safe out there, guys. Appreciate y'all. You know, we got some moisture out here, but it won't be long. A couple of days of this wind, uh, it, it'll we'll be back in the fire danger, I have no doubt. So be, be real careful while you're out there. No, yeah. no kidding. We've seen Let's how see. fast some fires can spread in that wind. And he's yeah. the only one that actually has a flamethrower, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Well, I have one, too. Oh, that's right. That's right. Man, I don't know if he picked it up yet. It, it, I got it to town for him, but uh, hopefully he got that picked up. So Yeah, I'm sure he will. So we'll have to do it. another one, and then we'll have to see. We'll have to figure out something. Hey, a uh, real question uh, for Gene. Uh, talking about, um, especially when you get into some of the older stuff, some of the oddball things and the more classic guns, you can fall down the rabbit hole going on the web, of course, looking for stuff all the time. And you can't always trust everybody, but who's the uh, who's your go-to when you want to want to find something like ammo or something from for something a little odd ammo um mm -hmm. uh, kind of tough because uh, i'll admit uh, usually if i buy a rifle the the second purchase and sometimes it'll leave with me will be the dies right you know for that rifle um you know i I'll catch graphs on occasion. They'll have some oddball stuff. Uh, gun shows is my main go-to. Yeah, that's still mine um, too. You know, find that stuff at gun shows. But actually, graphs and sons, I think, um, they'll have a lot of that oddball stuff. Um, I'm, just, I'm trying to rack my brain here. Uh, <laughs> I think we got the answer. Yeah, yeah we got the answer. answer. Sarah, she says I'm his go-to. <laughs> Gene, is Sarah yeah. there? I think she needs to come join the show. <laughs> uh, I don't know where she's at. Uh, she's probably in Vermilion right now. That's yeah, that's my shooting daughter. Um, yeah, I'm I'm getting ready to haul her out to DC here next month. So, oh, so, yeah. all right. So you get to go to the land of the most restrictions ever on your Second Amendment. You, you know, it's funny. Be the most free. You know, fun yeah. it's, it's funny you mentioned that. I I have an enhanced carry. <laughs> enhanced carry. Yep. And so I looked at all the, okay, I'm going through these states to see what their laws all say. I think I'm good all the way to D.C. Yeah, probably are. I mean, we've been down a lot of trips ourselves, haven't we, Vance? But uh, I oh, think yeah. we pretty much ignored. We really didn't care. <laughs> well, yeah. Sealed care. Yeah. Yeah, you see that. yeah, I remember walking. We went across the tip of Illinois completely illegal just because. Just because. <laughs> I don't even think we need up. to mention how many guns we had when we did. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that was that first hog trip. And we all were carrying. Yeah. We walked into that gas station to fill up and take a break. And I tell you what, that was the safest place probably in Illinois at that moment because we were all gunning pretty hard. Okay. Well, your wife, oh. your, your daughter says, uh, yeah, you can't even carry a taser. I mean, that's that's yeah. the thing. It was like, yeah. you can't protect yourself. I, and I think that is because I'm, I'm looking into all this. I ordered her a, a stun gun and some pepper spray and, and things like that. Um, but I think the taser part is, you know, it actually shoots out. So, Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Most most of the places you go to in D.C., you can't even take your pocket knife in with you. Nope. Ah. You know, it's ridiculous, uh, you know, especially when you go to see some of the, you know, the sites, you know, like Air and Space Museum or uh, if you go up to Arlington, if you go into any of the buildings, yeah, they, they will not let you take a knife. Uh, it, it's just, it's crazy out there. It's supposed to be well, the capital of the free country, and it's one of the most archaic places there are, really. Well, it's, the, my daughter's in Williamsburg, rules. Williamsburg, Virginia, and uh, yeah, that you know, she's part of the, the university there at Williams & Mary. And uh, she's a, a 
in administration for that place. And uh, yeah, it's it's amazing the rules they have that you can't even carry drive on things onto campus. I mean, it's just yeah. it's just uh, yeah. So Whalen chimed in here. He says the old Western scrounger on the web uh, used to be really good mm -hmm. for oddball ammo. So it probably is. Uh, I haven't ever yeah, been able to check that out. I, <clears throat> now that he mentioned Whale, that, I have Whale approved. What was that, Gene? I said now that he mentioned that, I have bought a few things from there. There you go. On You know, Whalen, I tell you what, maybe that's the guy to go to. You ask Whalen and he'll tell you where to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, like I said, I'm kind of lame -o on that stuff because I reload all that stuff, 303. I, I get the dies. Okay. Um, Way to go. So I, I, can, I can build it back to what I want. So There it is right there, guys, old Western scrounger. So. Right. There you go. And no, we're, not, uh, we're no. not sponsored by them, but we'll give them a free plug here. And As you can see, they got a ton of stuff on there. So new arrivals. It looks like they looks like they deal in about everything. So. Yeah. Fine, rare collectibles, closeouts. Uh, trying to just look at some of the other stuff they got. Closeouts, you're loads. speaking my name. <laughs> <laughs> so that is Old Western Scrounger. I haven't looked for the uh, oddball stuff, but I've used um, bulkammo.com. Um, when I drive, when I get home and I drive in the driveway and there's a box in front of the garage that says uh, certain calibers or something on it, I know my son's been online. Which I like. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, you Mike, let me. Yeah, go ahead. I was, I was going to say, let me clarify. You say oddball. Um, you know, so are we talking like 303 British or are we talking like 43 Spanish? You know, that's. Oh. Something. The three or three you know, British, but even even the eight millimeter Mauser is not an easy one. I mean, if you got the, I've got the dies for it, but I don't have the reloading here for it. So I mean, I'm, oh, okay. I got a friend of mine that can then put that together. But you know, it's it's just one of those things where it's like you know that there are certain rounds that are you know it's just harder to get. We know how that is, and so it's yeah, good to know yeah. friends. Good to know friends <clears throat> that do it. So, hey, um, Clay, we uh, what's that? We should probably. Oh, the boss is talking. Yeah, guess what I got to go do, guys. <laughs> you got to go do another cow. All right. Uh -oh. I knew it's been, you know what? I'm glad because you know, we had it's this front thing. going through. It's a good thing we get done earlier. But, yeah, it, it does not have any respect for the Guns and 7 for one show. That's all right. None That's at all. all. Right. So we got, before I do uh, go, I got to share one more thing, though. Yeah, go ahead. You know, right here. I, I just did a quick search and found another one, collectible, antique, and obsolete ammunition in original boxes. And that's Ooh. at rtgammo.com. So there's another hmm. one right there. All right. Yeah. So something to check out. All I right. With that, guys, to. I guess I'm going to sign out again. I just thought I'd jump in here when we got back in. But uh, All right, buddy. Tell Danelle the boys we said hey. I will do that. Gene, uh, if I don't see you, uh, uh, thanks for coming on. And I wish I could have been here longer. But uh, Sure, no problem. Don't forget, don't forget guys, I know I'm going to be joining. I, I think you're going to as well, Mike. I, I, I'm not quite sure who's all going to be on there, but drinks with the 701 on Friday night. So Yep, we're going to uh, be coming in. A, we're coming in hot a little late, but I will be coming in. Okay. So yeah, we'll get Are that. Are you joining done. us, Vance, on that one or not? I can. I mean, I think I think we can put like 15 spots on there if we want. <laughs> so, anyway, um, uh, thanks again, Gene, and uh, I'll probably yeah, talk to you soon. Okay. I don't know all if right, you can buddy. see it. I don't. I don't drink, but that's my collection back there. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. I noticed that yeah. back there, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, catch you later. See you, man. Thank you, Clay. Well, gunsinthe701.com, of course, we've got our great sponsors. We've got a, uh, we've been talking about, uh, of course, uh, uh, Double H Guns and also, of course, Axel and the gang right there at Lawler uh, Auto Repair. Hey, uh, we've got a new segment, Gene. I don't know if you have caught it yet in the last couple of weeks, but uh, the badass of the week, and we try to come up with uh, somebody different uh, each week that uh, doesn't get talked about a lot. They get tired of putting me on there. I know. Mm -hmm. Well, you're on every week, so that's just <laughs> badass of the day. There you go. But uh, I'll, uh, I'll play uh, this. Of course, this is uh, Charles J. French. And he was uh, actually a cook uh, in uh, on one of the ships uh, back in uh, in the day of uh, World War II. And uh, I've got a little uh, five minute story for him. So if you guys want to take a quick break, I will uh, play this, and uh, we'll be right back. It's uh, GunsInThe701.com with our badass of the week. Bring it on! Excellent.
It's Guns in the 701.com's weekly edition of the Badass of the Week. This week, we go back to World War II once again with Charles Jackson French. Born September 25th, 1919, he was an orphan from Foreman, Arkansas. swim in the Red River at the age of eight. First enlisting in the Navy in 1937, he completed his enlistment in 1941 as a mess attendant third class and moved to Omaha, Nebraska, where he lived with his older sister. When the attack on Pearl Harbor happened, French went to the closest recruitment office and on December 19, 1941, re-enlisted in the Navy. Now, while serving, after French's ship, the high-speed transport USS Gregory was sunk by gunfire from an Imperial Japanese Navy ship in the Solomon Islands on the morning of September 5, 1942. The mess attendant second class swam six to eight hours in shark-infested waters near Guadalcanal, all while towing a life raft with 15 survivors aboard dragging them out of range of Japanese gunfire and possible capture, which would likely have meant execution. Swimming until sunrise, French and the 15 sailors on the raft that he was towing were spotted by a scout aircraft. The pilot dispatched a marine landing craft to pick them up. French was one of six sailors who swam through the night and up to eight hours, rescuing all but 11 members of Gregory's crew. Now, French was recommended for the Navy Cross, but instead received only a, f a form letter of commendation from Admiral William F. Halsey Jr. in May of 1943. Now, Admiral Halsey was then commander of the South Pacific Fleet. The commendation stated, for notorious conduct and action while serving on board of a destroyer transport, which was badly damaged during the engagement with the Japanese forces in the British Solomon Islands on September 5, 1943. Now, the survivors felt that French deserved a higher tribute, possibly a congressional medal, or at least a silver star. But the Gregory episode was complicated by the insurance of posthumous silver stars to Lieutenant CDR F. Bauer, the ship's commander. Wounded and dying, the skipper ordered two companions to leave him and go on to eight other crewmen who were yelling for help. He was never seen again. By Navy standards, it would be nearly unprecedented for a subordinate to receive a higher decoration for an act of heroism comparable to that of a superior. Which is some bull crap! And noted on History.com, you can see that 1.2 million African Americans who served in World War II fought for democracy overseas while being treated as second-class citizens by their own country. French was memorialized on a war gum trading card and in a comic strip. The Chicago Defender named him Hero of the Year. Now, French was discharged as a Stuart Mates First Class on March 9, 1945. After the war, he married and had one daughter. Suffering from alcoholism, most likely caused by post-traumatic stress disorder, French died on November 11, 1956 at the age of 37. He was buried at Fort Rosicrucian National Cemetery in San Diego, California. And what should have happened long ago, in 2022, French was posthumously awarded the Navy and Marine Corps Medal for heroic actions not involving direct contact with an army enemy. Dragging soldiers through shark-infested waters with a rope tied to you for eight hours. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. The award was presented on May 21st, 2022 at Naval Base San Diego at a ceremony in which the base's rescue swimmer training pool was dedicated in French's honor. On the 10th of January of 2024, the U.S. Secretary of the Navy, Carlos de Toro, announced a new Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer, the DD-142, would be named the U.S. Charles J. French in his honor. It's all a little too late, but you know what? You got to admit, if you wanted anybody next to you on a ship, in a foxhole, anywhere that was going to have your back, it would be him. We are talking about Charles Jackson French, a true badass. 
We appreciate you listening to the Badass of the Week on GunsInThe701.com. We're going to try to do this for you every week and give you uh, new people and some cool information. If you got time to go to GunsInThe701.com and check out some of our stuff in the store, uh, t-shirts or maybe some of our assault tumblers, whatever you see there, please pick up a few things, help us out a little bit. And uh, on the site as well, you can see the QR code that you can always donate a little money, eh, whatever you got, whatever you want to spare to help us out as we uh, buy up new equipment and improve our studios and do more stuff on GunsInThe701.com. Hey, this has been Badass of the Week on GunsInThe701.com. I'm Mike, and as Clay always says, keep your powder dry. All righty, back to GunsInThe701.com. I muted everybody there real quick. Sorry about that because uh, yeah, I'm learning the machinery. But uh, what you guys think about the Badass of the Week this week? That's a good segment, man. I really, I really enjoy that. That was a good one, too. I like them. I like yeah, it. I like it a lot. Yeah. I love the hit. I, I'm a history buff. I love history mm-hmm. and war history. And then when you see them, them heroes that you don't necessarily read about in the history books, real common like, um, I, I really enjoy that. That was a good segment. I got one that uh, you know, but you just didn't know how badass he was besides the, the normal stuff. But uh, Chuck Yeager next week. Is oh, what really? I'm working on right now. So nice. uh, I did not realize that all the battles that he was in, not only in World War II, but all the the uh, planes that he flew in Korea, or actually I should say, uh, not in Korea, uh, in uh, Vietnam, uh, and everything. I mean, yeah, he's been nonstop uh, yeah. all the way up and uh, to his later years. Uh, just a, an absolute badass, and uh, yeah, got a, got some good stuff yeah. on him coming up. Hopefully he next punched, week. He was 80, 80 something years old. He punched a photographer for getting too close to his family. <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah, that, that's the guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was a badass too. But uh, you know, I'm working on that. I've got some others working. I got a couple of uh, badass women uh, I'm working on as well. Yeah. So as I as I get a chance to uh, get it all edited up, so I'm glad you guys all like it. We're gonna post that again on uh, our social medias tomorrow. We'll put that out there, so it'll be its own separate thing. But uh, uh, we do appreciate that. And so, yeah, I try to do my very best. And uh, like I said, uh, I think I got to get Gene to do it. Gene, if you can put your finger up toward that little, little, um, what do they call those things? Uh, the barcode up there. <laughs> we try to point up to the barcode. <laughs> oh, here? There you go. There you go, Gene. Thank you yeah, very much, yeah. Gene. So if you guys want to go to that, you can always go and, of course, check out of some of our merch and also uh, do a little uh, money for us if you like the show and uh, pass the word there around so go, that Gene. we can get everybody yeah. going and yeah, that'll be pretty good. Uh, I got a thing from Jamie, uh, the time that uh, Chuck Yeager hunted Wyoming antelope from a fighter plane. Uh, I got that good story. I didn't even have that one, so I might have to add that to it. So good thing I'm still editing. Oh, he sent me the story, too. That's going to be a good one. I oh, like that. So I got yeah. my uh, one of my, my I think both my boys are on here tonight. John Boy was on earlier. Uh, Clifford's on here. He's kind of a gun nerd. Lafayette Greenpool. I have no idea what he's talking about. Do you? Think? Lafayette Greenpool. Mm-mm. I'll have to look him up because you know that's what I'm doing. I'm always looking for somebody <laughs> different. He he's a history buff and he keeps up with old guns and all kinds of stuff. Uh, He'll yeah. be saying stuff to me, and I'm like, dude, I'm gonna have to look that up. <laughs> you know, and, it, and it sounds like a lot of these guys got up that day, didn't know they were going to be a badass of the week. It just absolutely the situation yeah. thrust yeah. upon them. Yeah. You know, I've read I some stories one. about Audie Murphy that are just incredible. I mean, oh, all yeah. five, three of that guy was <clears throat> straight up tough. I got one American girl that I uh, back in the turn of the century of the 1800s to the 1900s who uh, she was a um, a fencer and a broadsword expert and taught self-taught and uh, defeated 300 of the best men in the world uh, uh, with the broadsword. Uh, wow. And she had the scars to prove it too. So even though they were all blunted weapons and everything, she, she still had plenty of scars, but uh, yeah, led a, a pretty strong life. I'm, uh, I, I forget she was nicknamed La Jaguaria or something like that. So mm-hmm. I got, a, I got, mm-hmm. like I said, I'm always working on, stuff for people and uh, trying to trying to come up with some cool stuff so we'll have another uh, episode coming up next week and uh, you can always check out the back issues as well on our social media sites here at guns in the 701 uh gene uh, as we uh, we've been talking about the the guns and more throughout the day of course um 
Here is who War Daddy from the movie Furry. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Fury. Fury is a good one. Did I say Furry? That's yeah. that's a totally different movie. Yeah. <laughs> I think that'd be totally different. Sorry for the kids out there. Uh, yeah. So yeah, but that was a good movie too. But yeah, I love that one. Uh, love the tank movies. I mean, tank movies are always good. We were we were talking about uh, who were we last week? We were talking about uh, uh, the one eyed ghost. Oh, um, Leo, uh, Leo Major, yeah, the one-eyed guy who took on the tanks and everything else, and just said he only needed one eye to side in his gun. So you know that's all he needed. So couldn't even kick him out. What a but, what uh, an optimist! About that, of course, we're talking about uh, talking about rifles and hunting and everything, and what you're comfortable with. What's your opinion on the scopes? Uh, do you think the iron sights is something that should be stressed a little more toward when your kids are younger? Uh, or do you think that scopes are you know a bit of a crutch, or do you think it's a, actually a good thing? Um, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever your kid's comfortable with. Um, I, when my my daughter Sarah, if she's still listening, maybe she can chime in. Um, I took him took her down to the range. She got her first mentored tag. She was about ten or eleven years old. Right. Uh, let her try some scopes. Let her try some iron sights. Let her try, you know, a little bit of everything. First time we went hunting, we went with. Uh, iron sights. Uh, she shot her first deer. Okay. You ready for this? She shot her first deer with an SKS. Yeah. Um, you know, shot it, shot a doe. Um, and then just this last year, she shot a deer with, a oh, it's a six, five Swede. It's a bolt action used a scope. So, right. Um, so yeah, yeah whatever, what are, whatever they're comfortable in. with. We're all clicking on the button. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Oh, yeah, she, she hates the scopes. There you go. Iron sights. That's what, what she likes. But you know what? That's the thing. Right there. <laughs> we talk about it is that, uh, you know, you train yourself. I mean, the more you do it, the better you are, the more comfortable you are with the, with the weapon. And then, of course, yeah, if you're if you're good at iron sights, like I said, I in in a wooded area, I'm perfectly fine doing iron sights on a, like on my 30, 30 and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, what's uh, J.D. got a question for you here. What's the best ball reloading powder for 3030 muzzle velocity, 125 grain bullets? Oh boy, uh, I've never loaded a 125 grain. My 3030 powder, I've always used IMR 31, uh, 3031. Um, I don't know if that'll work in 125 grain or not. That's just what I used. So, right. Um, maybe a little 4895 ish. So, but hey. If you guys want to continue the show, I'll consult. <laughs> That's fine. You consult real quick. We'll look at some of the other things Sarah's got saying here. We got Sarah. Time to in. I think I'm too short for a scope. I can never <laughs> see out of them. There you go. Uh, we also got, uh, let's see who we got here. We got Cliff, of course, uh, <coughs> both subjects together. Uh, Simo Haya is one of the best snipers ever, and he was only hmm. shot with iron. So that's a good one to do. I'm going to check him out. So that'll be a good one, yeah. So that'll be pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's a you know, and that's the thing. It's like you know, it's amazing. I think that some of us are 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 naturally predestined to to be to have you know those natural abilities that some people have. You know, some of us have to work harder at it, and some of us just have that natural ability to be able. Like I like I said, I don't think my eyes have ever been very good. I've uh, had glasses since I was in second grade. Uh, since I've been hunting, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I remember when I had those transition glasses. It would mess with my the, going from up and down for the scope and everything else. It was just, you know, it was just terrible. So, you know, I think uh, I finally got a pair of glasses and a prescription that actually works for me and everything. I, I, I think that, uh, you know, once you learn... Uh, to work with what you got, I mean that's fine. But some people are just naturals. Some people are just unbelievable naturals. And and I and I'm happy to know a lot of those people. As a matter of fact, there's a there's a lot of, uh, of, of great people that listen to the show here. As a matter of fact, and up here in the 701 that uh, have taught me a lot of things about uh, rifles and pistols and other stuff. And that's why I I listen. That's why I pay attention. So mm -hmm. it's good to have these conversations once in a while as well. So I do appreciate that. Uh, yeah. Age helps determine iron, red dot, or scope. Uh -huh. And actually, oh, how old is Sarah? She shoots iron. Yeah. How old is Sarah, Gene? Uh, Sarah is uh, 19, B20. So, 
And she shoots you know? iron. Yep. yep. Um, you know, so whatever she likes, I, like I said, I, I give them all the options. You want to go hunting, you, you shoot what you want to shoot. Um, you know, what you're comfortable with right now. Like I said, I, she likes my six, five Swede. Um, it's a commercial built hunting rifle, but yeah, she kind of likes that one. It's a uh, 243 on steroids is what it is. Okay. Um, you know, ballistically, it's an old Swedish military, but it's efficient. It works. And yeah, she, she likes it. So, you know, go. Yeah. And then that's it. go with what, go with what you know and go with what you like. If you don't like a yep. gun, I mean, that's, that's the term and that determines a ton right there. I mean, I love the concept of, we, uh, I was listening to Jamie and uh, Scott talking the other night uh, about the uh, 4570. Love the concept of it and how much power it has and what a good gun it is. But with my bad shoulder, it just tears me up. And, you know, I, I just, you know, so I stay away from stuff. So 243 usually is what I'm sticking with. But, uh, yeah, it's like I said, you, you go with what you know and what you like. If you don't like it, you're not going to have any fun shooting anyway. And and, like what and, Gene said earlier, practice, practice, practice. Be yeah. proficient mm -hmm. with your firearm, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, at to your 4570, you know, if you go buy a factory load for that 4570, yeah, it's going to it's gonna punish you. Um, you reload. You know, I always turn back to the uh, trapdoor data. You know, that's your old school 1873. That's not right. as punishing. Um, and then like what Vance reiterated, practice 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 right yeah so Let's see what's we got here from jd again we've got the uh man you're 50, old, he's 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 young still that's right uh starting like a green doc sites a lot um also we had uh cliff looking in here what did the cliff have to say real quick because his opinions on the 223 wild do you have anything on that gene i've never heard of it so Never heard of it either, so I, I, mean, no. I wish I was as good as Clay as I could look it up real quick, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've heard of it, but I'm not real familiar with it. I don't have one. I haven't shot one. Um, that's why I say he, he's my gun nerd son. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like engines and, and guns. I go to my son because he's smarter than I am right now. So With um, engines, he'll come to me. With guns, I'm going to go to him. <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm going to call that I'm going to call that Wildcat. I, I'm not very familiar with any of that stuff. Yeah, I'm not familiar um, with that at all. But that's fine. We'll learn more about it. We'll get, we'll get some. Uh, let's see. 223 Wild it's is God's, God's chamber. chamber. That's what he says. So, so apparently oh, JD's familiar with it. JD's, JD's pretty good with it there. I JD, guess. we're going to need to see a video on that. We're going to need to see a review. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're going to take one more quick break here real quick, and uh, then we'll go ahead and uh, get into the uh, finals of the show, and uh, we'll be back in just a second. Of course, we've got, uh, we're sitting here with uh, GunsInThe701.com, and we'll be back right after this. <clears throat> Repair, located at 309 South Washington Street in Bismarck, North Dakota. Give them a call at 701-258-6308. The team of mechanics at Lauer Auto can take care of any problem your vehicle is having. And when you do business with Lauer, you can be assured you're doing business with a pro Second Amendment America First Repair Shop. There are plenty of other auto repair shops in the Bismarck Mandan area. But why take a chance at patronizing a shop that might not have your beliefs at heart? Make no mistake. Make no mistake. Lauer Auto is your pro Second Amendment repair shop. When you talk to the guys at Lauer Auto, don't forget to tell them that you heard they are a sponsor of Guns and the 701 and that you appreciate their support of our pro Second Amendment, pro North Dakota live stream and podcast. That's Lauer Auto Repair, 701-258-6308. 701-258-6308. Located 309 South Washington Street in Bismarck, North Dakota. Guns in the 701.com. Clay is out calving and once again working on his eighth calf for today. We've got Vance here with us and Gene Cox once again back in the studios as we're working on uh, seeing what's going on with uh, everything. Of course, we've got a lot of good chats coming up tonight, some good questions and and some I don't know. Of course, uh, we're talking about uh, Whalen had a little answer. Of course, I should have known Whalen would know. Uh, <laughs> Whalen says the wide chamber you can use in 223 or 556. So you can use it for your AR is what you're saying for okay. most of your ARs, correct? Okay. Probably. All right. All right. There and you go. I, like, I don't, and, and I don't own an AR, so I'm not that I'm opposed to them. I just, no, I just don't have one. Yeah. 
does it does it interest you or do you, is it just something that you've never really wanted to pull the trigger and it's just because you're just like eh? or does it is you know it's just one of those things i have to be i'm sorry here i'm sitting in a quick text all right i'll be back with you um okay now here no, I am. Fine. no i have to be going down the road and just have the epiphany of you need this <clears throat> and i just haven't had it yet um I was in the National Guard, Fort Sill. We had M16s, which, you know, that's a little bit older than the new stuff they have now. So right. um, if I were to buy one, I'd probably go try to find one of those old fixed stock um, <laughs> the M16s. So, Wayland. oh, I, I, I see that. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Waylon's just taking a shot at Gene. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> I see what you're saying now. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Yeah. Un American, yeah. Uh, there you go. Anyway. Um, well, well, you know I mean, I'll just go buy I've one. Got, How's that? I've got yeah, there you go. Well, now there we talked you into it. Now you have yeah. an excuse to buy a gun. Whalen yeah. Whalen uh <laughs> shamed you into it. You know, two hundred and fifty dollars yeah. uh conversion kit for the uh AR for your AR to uh like we I go back to I I need to get them on here as as sponsors, uh Boyd's Gunstock. Um they've got that conversion kit for your AR to put it to wood and man, it looks good now. And I think some people are like, ah, I don't know if I like that, but man, I'll tell you what, it looks pretty it, to me. To me, it looks like when you, that. I have mixed yeah. feelings about that one. Yeah. You got mixed feelings. I don't yeah. Know. I mean, it, it does look kind of cool, but I'm the type of guy that I like a traditional wood stock on, mm -hmm. on certain firearms. Uh, to me, an AR is a synthetic stock gun. I, I don't know. I just, I just can't, I have a hard time separating the two. Recently, my son Clifford was showing me some uh, the tactical thirty thirties. Right, I'm not a fan. It's just to me you that be into it. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm just not into it. And I got nothing against them to each their own. I mean, if anything that gets people into shooting and outdoors and and things like that, that's great. It's just just not my thing. I like I said, I got nothing against it. It's just not me. Well, you know, it's like uh, with me, um, take things like the SKSs, you know, there's tons of those. Remember when those were everywhere uh, back in the 90s and early, early aughts, um, uh, SKSs were everywhere. But I'll tell you what, I didn't really care for them. But when you got to be like uh, on the AKs, like the Hungarian, uh, you know, ones with the that they had that particular wood patina. Uh, they had that particular look. There was this yeah. little style difference, so, you know, other, other than the uh, than the uh, Chinese versions and whatnot. Um, yeah, there are some out there that really just kind of stand out to me. And, I, and like I said, unless I find one of those, I don't really go for the for the a, uh, for the AK as much at all. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, was it Century Arms that came out with the synthetic uh, AK a few years ago that we we used to have at the gun shows uh, yeah, or at the, uh, I at think the NRA so, banquets? Yeah. yeah, and I said. You know, I actually was interested in those for a little bit. You know, it just, it'd be interesting to own, but you know, like I said, it, I, I, I've, I'm getting to that point, and I guess at an age as well, where I'm kind of wanting to, kind of tool away from the synthetic. I, I'm just not like, you know, maybe someday I'm going to pass all my guns down to my kids, and that's fine. But I want them. I want them to all stand out a little bit. I want them to pass down something decent. And uh, yeah, I, I just. Like I said, for the uh, for the ARs, I love that conversion kit. If you if you ever get a chance to look at it online at Boyd's Gun Stocks, yeah, it is just a super. It makes the gun just look so. It kind of reminds me of that really cool look that you get when you get a nice looking um, uh, Thompson. You know the the Thompson the when they get a nice nice wood grain on a Thompson. Yeah, it's just it's just a beautiful gun. And I, I think it actually kind of works out with that. But yeah, uh, let's just, see. All that I heard through that whole thing, uh, Mike, was just I'm old. Yeah, well, I know I'm old, but here, let me. I gotta, I gotta share this one with you guys. Did I lose it here real quick, but uh, I, I think I did. I see. Oh, there you go. This one I got it. Just waiting to inherit Gene's thirty-eight sub. There you go. Did you hear which one she's talking about, Gene? Yeah, yeah, that's Sarah. She's uh, the, uh, another one of those epiphanies, you know, we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a 1911. It's, uh, oh, crap, Para, Para made it. So it's a 1911. Right. It's uh, polished stainless steel. And it's in 38 Super. And oh, okay. okay. I, I, I bought it just, that looks cool. I think you got to have one. So, yeah, it was an impulse. Um, so, you know, maybe Wayland's trying to guilt me into it, but maybe I'll get an impulse and get an AR, you know? 
I think go. Waylon was carrying a 30 super when we were in Florida hog hunting. I, I'm pretty sure that's what a possibility. Okay. There. Yeah. Um, what else we got in here before we run out of time? Gene, a company is now making a bolt action AR. I'm interested. Well, right. get a couple of them. Uh, Q firearms. Is that Q, JD? Q firearms? I think they're out of Vermont or Maine. Yeah, that's an interesting concept right there. Well, I'm, you know, hey, I'm willing to try anything, especially if he's buying for Christmas. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, replying to JD, uh, we've got uh, probably JD Smith. Uh, I've seen these, and usually they're in higher calibers. Cliff said that. So, and then Cliff said, <laughs> Cliff's got a lot to say tonight. Yeah, Cliff's got a lot to say here. Why don't <laughs> just put him on the show? I'm giving his own camera. I mean, there's a JJFUAR with wood stocks, and they are really nice. Yeah. I get it. Uh, oh, okay. well, you know what? We're running out of time a little bit here real quick, Gene. Of course, but I want to remind everybody about uh, uh, 701 Nation coming up on Friday. And if I am correct, uh, that will be uh, 7 o'clock. I hope I'm not wrong on this. 7 o'clock uh, Mountain Time, I do believe. I'm not uh, absolutely sure. But uh, we're going to have drinks with the 701. And we're hoping Coffee. everybody will tune in for that one. Uh, yeah, well, you know. Well, we might have to break out some of Gene's uh, back uh, shelf over there and, and see what's going on over there. <laughs> Well, but, uh, I'll just yeah, meet at Gene's house. Yeah, <laughs> meet at Gene's house. That's We're at the, the mayor's auction. house. We're speaking. That's for the auction. Right? <laughs> well, but uh, I've got myself the some rye beer. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> mm. I got myself that's, some that's rye beer running. for that night, so I'm looking forward. So I'm looking forward rye to it. I don't beer. drink as much as I used used to anymore, but I uh, yeah, it says uh, Waylon did say that he uh, he did carry that super super in. Uh, I yeah. Oh, 38, uh, 30. There we go. That's right. Drinks with the 701 Friday, 8 p.m. Central. So that would be what? Um, was I right? Was it Seven Mountain? No. Yeah, that'd be right, wouldn't it? No, it's the other way around. Yeah, they're slower. No, oh, that's right. Mountain. Okay. That's right. They're slower. Seven Mountain. There. So there we go. So that's, uh, of course, Drinks with the 701. I hope you guys all join us right here. Of course, we're going to be having that uh, part of the guns in the 701.com. Uh, uh, I got. I'm always trying to find out where everything is here. Got to click the buttons before. I almost old Gene Skeleton Head Vodka in high school. <laughs> <laughs> you can't it, tell on yourself it, now, it, just because you're 20. I had, an, I had another skeleton head up on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> is she telling on herself? <laughs> yeah, she shouldn't do that. She I think so. Wait yeah. till the statute of limitations is up. <laughs> Yeah. The statute of yeah. limitations got to end so, up on that one. But anyway, so yeah, we're, uh, we're about away. running out of time here real quick. Yeah. Uh, reminder, everybody, of course, we do appreciate Gene coming on, talking to us about uh, guns and whatnot. Of course, I know he's a busy man and he's got stuff going on, but we do appreciate it. And you always tune into the show as well. I uh, want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight to guns in the 701.com 701 nation coming up this Friday drinks with the 701. And uh, don't forget that little donation button that you see up there on that barcode. Uh, you can scan that if you want to go ahead. Yeah, it's <laughs> that way. Yeah. And you can scan that if you want to drop us some coins because we always need to get new equipment. Uh, I'm always working on stuff. Uh, my room is getting better, but I, if my wife flushes the toilet upstairs, it's pretty bad. Ooh, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Couldn't see what that was. Anyway, but uh, we've got a lot going on, and we do appreciate it. Of course, we thank everybody for tuning in. Guys, we will see you all later on. And as always, of course, I think Clay ends the show with keep your powder dry. So we'll do the same this time. And uh, Vance, you want to take us out with a prayer real quick? Absolutely. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunities you've given us in this still great country. And Lord, we just ask that you guide the hearts of our representatives in Washington, D.C. and around this nation. We ask that you continue to protect our soldiers abroad and stateside. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to bless us with this show and bring us knowledge and bring those knowledge to those that tune in to us, Lord. We love you and we thank you for all that you've blessed us with. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See you guys next week.